Hey everyone, I'm Professor Tressela Nelson, um, a faculty member at the University of California, Santa Barbara. And today we're gonna talk a bit about ethics in GIS with a focus on issues surrounding data privacy. So it's no surprise that privacy and data matters a lot. Just think about all the data that you give out on yourself on a, on a regular basis as you shop online, register for classes, um, do telehealth appointments. So there's a lot of security put in place to protect your privacy um, when you give that data. But we know from the news and maybe from personal experience that data breaches are you know, troublesome and problematic and can have a pretty negative impact on people's lives. Now, when we deal with spatial data, we have geographic coordinates associated with that data. So not only do we know a number of things about people and places, but we can also know the locations of where those things occur. And one of the coolest things I think about spatial data is that location is a universal way of indexing all of our data sets. So if you can tie, um, say, a variety of data sets to a particular home address, you can actually have very, very rich data about who lives there. And you could know many things about them without even knowing their name. And so because of this additional dimension, of um, location, the privacy implications of data that we work with in GIS and mapping are particularly, um, I think, important to consider. Your phone um, tracks a lot of what you do, and a lot of the apps that you use on your phone will track the locations at which you do those things. And so um, often those data sets are actually sold to third-party vendors. So you might be using their weather app, um, it'll allow, ask if, if it can track you, it'll track you while you move around, and maybe that is helpful for giving you weather that's accurate for the location that you're in, but it also means that, that now that it has all this, the app has all this movement data, which it can then sell to other kinds of vendors who maybe want to sell you something, or it's quite common for um, apps to sell data to third parties that actually package up the data and then resell it. So there's basically a commodity around spatial data um, that has to do with location and tracking and privacy. So anyway, it's something I think about when I get asked if my app can track me. Um, but you can imagine all of the nefarious things that can be done when we know someone's location, all of the stories that could be told. I remember asking someone really early on, well, not really early on, a few years ago, like, well, I don't really care if they track you know, if the phone tracks my location, why do I care? And then um, he kind of walked me through a day. It's like, well, you know, you leave your house, you go to work, maybe you stop somewhere and get gas, maybe you stop somewhere and get groceries, maybe, you know, if you think about your entire day, is that always something that you want publicly displayed? I'm not doing anything bad, but maybe I don't want everyone knowing that I got to work 10 minutes early or left 10 minutes later, vice versa. And also I think maybe I don't want people knowing um, where I am right before I get hungry and go to the grocery store because maybe that would be an opportune time for them to you know, send me information about food that I may or may not want. So I think there's just a lot of reasons to think about, um, we're like we think about the nefarious activities associated with spatial data and privacy, but I, I just think there's a lot of agency that comes with protecting that data. One really interesting example about sort of the trade-offs between data privacy and sort of technological capability did occur during COVID-19. So very quickly, people reached out to experts like myself and others to say, what can we do about contact tracing? So this was the idea that, you know, if you had your phone with you <laughs> all the time, you could, um, know what other phones that you came in contact with and get alerts if one of the people that you came in contact was also diagnosed with COVID-19. And in theory, we had the technology to do this. We even had the technology to do it um, and protect people's privacy because you could just say that you were, um, what, like it didn't, all that data didn't even need to be stored all the time to, to give you um, the alerts that you needed. But who wants to be tracked all the time? And the worrisome thing about allowing tracking, even during a time like COVID-19, when we were all looking for innovative solutions to let us get out of our houses, um, 
is that once you allow that in that sort of uh use of your information it can be very very difficult to backtrack so one of the things we do think about in gis sometimes is what are the guardrails that we need to have in place to use data when we need it and then back it off when there's less urgency and i think that's a really challenging problem so i think like my point though overall is that there is this tension between what we can do we can track where everyone is and we'll link that to your health record and what we should do and i think going forward, the field of GIS and GIS professionals are going to be challenged with this tension quite, quite often. The health data, which we're talking about a lot in this module, is particularly interesting because it's so personal. So most countries do have some kind of protection that people are provided. In, in the U.S., it's called HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, which basically gives people the right to privacy around health data. And that actually can make health data quite tricky to work with in a GIS because we, we don't wanna link people's health outcomes or, or anything else about them to um, their individual locations. So there are a lot of questions that we could ask with GIS that really just aren't appropriate. And I think it's always important to think about the work that you're doing and whether or not the, it's the right thing to do. You, just because you can do it doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do. And a really interesting example of that, I think, is the John Snow case study, which was the 1954 cholera epidemic. And John Snow mapped out the cases and noticed this cluster around the Broad Street the, um, pump. And so close to that pump. We could never get away with doing this now. So basically, he was running a natural experiment whereby the outcome that he was going to measure was whether or not people got cholera. So now universities and most research institu institutions have really strong ethics protocols, which means we could never get away with running a natural experiment on people. But that doesn't mean that we can't develop hypotheses and have other interventions that allow us to protect people using spatial data and the hunches um, that we get from looking at the patterns or the testing that we can do of hypotheses with more confirmatory analysis. So just, in, just to leave you then with these ideas, I think the two things I really want you to take away is that we do have additional responsibilities when we work with map data because the location data associated with it is powerful and sensitive. And how you use your map matters a lot. So you need to think about not only can you do it, but should you do it? And I think an interesting litmus test perhaps for, for that is to think about who is at the table when you're making decisions about what analysis that you're going to do. If Jon Snow had have called all the, the uh, people of the Soho area that he was running this experiment in and said, hey, do you think this is a good idea? I'd be curious to know what they would say. Like, sure, we're going to measure whether or not my kid got cholera. Like, like, perhaps that isn't the measure that if you asked a community, they would want you to use, even if your goal is to protect them. And so I think when we do work in communities, thinking about how that community gets to have a say in the work we do can be super important. So I'm really excited to... Um, See what you come up with in your responses to some of our ethical activities.